I'm going to open up this um, this webinar with a brief explanation of of, of an ADEX. I'm going to move through it pretty quickly, and then I'm going to hand the um, the floor over to Gail Mercer, who is the founder of Traders Help Desk, who has got some great methodologies for trading uh, with uh, with Nadex. So we're off to the races. Let's get started. Um, first of all, please just take a quick second to take a look at our important trading disclaimer. You should always uh, use risk capital. Um, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Trading involves risk. I'll give you a couple seconds to take a look at that. Trading Pub provides free trading education for stocks, options, futures, Forex, and Nadex. And we've also published the first two books on Nadex trading strategies. You can get them at Nadex, at, uh, excuse me, at uh, tradingpub.com. The two books, Trading Made Simple and Nadex Warriors, between those two books, you'll have 22 strategies on how to trade Nadex binary options and spreads from nine trading educators, including the uh, Gail, who's with us today. About myself, I'm the Partler Relationship Manager and Content Manager for Trading Pub. Uh, I'm responsible for Partner Strategy Review. Basically, I engage with authors and speakers, uh, collecting material. We put out numerous projects every month, whether they're eBooks or on-demand videos. We edit them, edit them, and publish them, and it's all free to you. I also um, put together a monthly something called the Probability Report uh, monthly newsletter. That's a newsletter of Nadex uh, webinars and events. I also put in uh, articles on Nadex and uh, videos that I find interesting. I have a personal blog called The Inquisitive Trader, where I um, dissect uh, personal trades that I've taken. And I'm also now a regular uh, blog contributor to Nadex's uh, blog site. So here's Nadex in a nutshell. When you trade with Nadex, you are making a decision about where you think the price of a market will be relative to a strike price within a defined time period that you get to choose. Once again, you're taking a look at the market. You're making a decision whether it's going to be above or below a strike price within a defined time period of your choosing. It's pretty much that simple. Nadex binary options have been called yes or no trades. Each trade has a maximum value of $100 per contract traded, and that means the absolute most you can win or lose on any trade is $100 per contract. When you place a trade with Nadex, you always know your maximum risk and reward before you place the trade. <clears throat> and you are making a decision, once again, about where you believe the price of that index or commodity or forex pair is going to be relative to a strike price within a time period that you've chosen. As long as that trade is active within the defined time period, you cannot get stopped out. You can hold your trade until expiration and collect the maximum reward, or you can exit early and lock in profits or minimize losses. So let's go for an example of this. Let's say it's 12 o'clock noon Eastern time, and the current price of gold is 11.15 and it's climbing. And you trade gold quite often. You've got a high probability strategy for trading gold futures. All of your indicators are saying that gold is going to be an uptrend. Maybe you think it's going to go to 116, 118, maybe 120 by the time the, the um, 1120 by the time the pits close. If you believe that's going to happen, you could go to Nadex and you could find a strike price. And let's say there's a strike price at 11.10. Well, it's already at 11.15. You think it's going to climb. And you believe that gold is going to close above 11.10 by 1.30 Eastern Time. Well, the marketplace is probably going to agree with you. And that marketplace is buyers and sellers who also have opinions about the price of gold. They may determine that there's a 70% chance you're right. And if they do that, then your trade would risk $70 to make $30 on a high probability trade. Remember, every trade with Nadex binary options is some configuration of $100. And the, the marketplace of buyers and sellers determines what your risk is going to be relative to a strike price. So if 
the marketplace is already in your favor and it's moving away, you're going to risk more to make less. Let's take a look at the other side of that coin. Let's say that gold is at 1115 and you believe that it's not going to climb, but it's actually going to reverse and settle below 1110 at 130 when the pits close. Then at the time that you made that decision at noon, the market it was already at 1115. You're saying it's going down. They think it's going up. They might determine that there's a 30% chance that that's going to happen. And if you are a contrarian and you believe that the price of gold is going to reverse and settle below 1110, then your risk might be $30 to make $70 on a lower probability trade. Does that make sense? Quick yes or no? Or am I sounding a little abstract? Okay, I'm going to go to an example now. This is a five. This is going to be. This is a one-minute chart of yesterday's uh, pound dollar um, around this time of the day uh, yesterday. And what I did is I took a snapshot of that market. So. This is a five-minute trade. It's a very fast minute moving. It's a very fast moving trade, and the first candlestick is. Oops. Let me go back to that. I advanced. The first candlestick developed bullish. So. We have a strike price right here. And the way the Nadex charts look is on the right side, you have a series of strike prices. They're fixed strike prices at uh, various intervals. The marketplace is sitting right at this strike price right here. So here's the first candlestick right there. It's a five minute, it's a one minute chart, it's a five minute trade. So the first minute's out of the way, we have four minutes left in this trade. Will, and this red line right here, there's your expiration, that's the finish line. In the next four minutes, will, based upon what you're seeing on this chart, will this market settle above this strike price or settle below, at or below that strike price? Just type an A for above or a B for below. We're going to make this a little interactive. Anyone have a thought? Merrill says above. Charles says above. Any takers for the other side of that? Any, any belows? Chris says below. OK, well, what we have here is, is the marketplace is split. When you take a look at the at the bid ask spread over here, it's almost 50-50 on both sides of the coin, give or take a few dollars. About 50% of the marketplace thinks it's going to settle above. 50% means it's 50% think it's going to settle below, which means you would be risking $50 to make $50. So if you took that trade at the money, this is what Nadex calls an at, at the money trade. The marketplace is evenly divided in their sentiment on, on where the marketplace will settle. Your risk reward is about one to one. Now, the thing that makes Nadex interesting, excuse me, relative to other ways of trading, is you're not stuck trading where the market actually is. Basically, Nadex is an exchange that is facilitating your opinion of the marketplace versus, an versus someone who has a contrary opinion. And it doesn't matter where the market is. So within the same time frame, let's go up to this strike price up here. And I'm going to do a little above and a little bit below. How many people think that this marketplace can make it above that strike price in four minutes? Anyone? Yes or no? And how many people think it will settle below? A above, B below. Dan says it could. Anything is possible. Of course it is. But if you were looking at this marketplace and you were saying, hmm, where is this marketplace going to move? 
Do you think it's going to come across? Do, will it move all the way up here and breach that strike price, or will it probably stay below? The sentiment is largely that it'll probably stay below. So in this particular case, if you if you thought it was going to stay below, the marketplace is going to agree with you, and your risk. In this particular case, would be eighty-three dollars to make seventeen dollars, and if you thought it was going to be above, your risk would be twenty-six dollars to make seventy-four dollars. Let's take a look at this strike price down here at the bottom. I'm going to do a quick up and down here. If you believe that the marketplace was going to come all the way down here and, and cross this line within four minutes, the marketplace of buyers and sellers, in this example, would say that your risk would be about $22 for a $78 reward if the marketplace made it all the way down here, and your risk if you, was, if you uh, made the decision the marketplace was going to stay above this particular line, your risk would be $87 to make 13 So the higher your probability of success, the more you're going to risk. And the lower, the, the lower your probability of success, the less you're going to risk. There are strategies for in the money, at the money, and out of the money. Uh, Nadex uh, strategies in the books that I talked about earlier, and Gail today will be probably talking about some of her favorite strategies. So, once again, if you're if you if the marketplace is right at this line, you are at the money, 50/50 above and below. If you're up here, if you're a buyer, you're out of the money because the odds just are not in your favor. If you're below this line, you're in the money because the odds are heavily in your favor. If you are a buyer down here, the odds are heavily in your favor. If you're a seller way down here, the odds are against you, and you're going to risk less. So that's, that's essentially Nadex in a nutshell. Hope that made sense. Okay, a couple more things about Nadex. Nadex is a North American Derivatives Exchange. It is a wholly owned subsidiary of the IG Group, which is listed on the London FTSE Index. It is headquartered in Chicago, and it is subject to strict regulatory oversight by the CFTC. When you trade with Nadex, you're not trading through a broker. You place your orders directly on an exchange, so there are no middleman profits to be uh, taken out of your account. Your member funds are held in a segregated bank account in the United States. There is full transparency on every trade, and Nadex does not take market positions against you. All they're doing is facilitating your opinion about where the market's going to go versus someone who has a contrary opinion. And they collect their money on exchange fees, and I'll get to that in a uh, Nadex was previously available only to legal residents of the United States, Canada, and Mexico. It is now available in 47 countries around the world, and you can find out where those are on Nadex.com. So when you place a binary options trade, you can choose from major uh, forex pairs, stock indices, commodities. Maybe uh, these are assets that you currently trade. Then you select the asset that you want to trade. Maybe it's the pound dollar or e-mini S&P or gold or crude. Then you're going to select the time frame that you want to trade in. And Nadex gives you options between a weekly expiration, a daily expiration, expirations on the hour. There, For some of the assets, there are 20-minute expirations and 5-minute expirations. You want to determine then next if you want to buy or sell a contract or a number of contracts. You get the number of contracts you want to trade. Determine the price that you want to pay for that contract and then place your order directly on the exchange. Once you do that, you can let that, that, that trade run until the expiration of the contract or you can close your position 
and lock in profits or minimize losses if the trade is moving against you. How much does it cost? Well, to, to start, you can open up a two-week uh, Nadex demo account for free. And that will uh, fund you with $25,000 in play money for two weeks. When you decide to fund a Nadex account, the minimum funding for a live account is only $100. The exchange fees that Nadex charges are $0.90 cents per contract per side, which means if you successfully close one contract, it's a $1.80 round trip. Your maximum exchange fees are $9 per contract per side. And it's capped there. So if you trade 10 contracts, that 90 cents times 10 contracts is $9. Round trip, that would be $18. If you trade 20 or 50 contracts, your uh, exchange fees would also be $18. So you can gain some economies. And then finally, one of the nicest things about Nadex is if you have a trade that is unsuccessful, you opened it, you couldn't get out of it, it closed out of the money unsuccessfully, you will be charged for your order execution fee to get into the trade, but you will not be charged the $0.90 cent per contract settlement fee. I'm not aware of uh, anyone else that does that. So quick summary before I hand it over to Gail. Binary options are based on a simple yes or no proposition. You have limited trade risk. You always know what your risk and reward will be before you place a trade. You can choose from multiple markets. You have spike protection. If the market whipsaws, you have fear of you have the confidence of knowing how to trade without the fear of being stopped out. And finally, it's a neg regulated exchange. It is subject to strict regulatory oversight by the CFTC. Uh, it's very transparent. Your funds are held in a segregated U.S. bank account, and it's very easy to make deposits and withdrawals. Um, for Nadex resources, you can go to tradingpub.com slash demo to get a $25,000 uh, Nadex demo account. Uh, at tradingpub.com, you're going to find uh, numerous articles and strategies for um, trading with Nadex. You'll also find the books. You'll find, um, if you go to probabilityreportblogspot.com, you'll find my monthly newsletter of Nadex webinars. I also publish... Uh, blog articles, as well as, as uh, Gail on Nadex's blog website. I put out a, a um, blog article every Monday and Wednesday, and that website is binaryoptions.nadex. And every day it's being updated with new, here's one I did recently on how to profit with working orders. So I typically detail how to, how to trade with Nadex, a particular strategy that I might have employed that day or the day previous. And um, I break down the trade and put it up on uh, Nadex, so you can follow along if you wish. And now I'd like to introduce you to Gail Mercer. She's the founder of Traders Help Desk. She has 15 years of trading experience and has developed many custom indicators. She's a recognized expert on volume analysis and a frequent contributor to Benzinga, Nadex, and other financial websites. Uh, her website is tradershelpdesk.com, and her agenda today will be to take a look at the markets today, how she trades them, and her trading methodology. So, Gail, if you will, let's come on and make sure that we can, everyone can hear you, okay? And then we'll pull up your screen and get it shared. Good morning, Cam. Can everyone hear me this morning? I can hear you sound a little tiny bit faint. Can you adjust your volume slightly? Actually, that might Is have been worse. Oh. A little bit more if you can. Okay. Is that better, Cam? That's perfect. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting some comments from Abby and a few that say that you're coming in loud and clear. And now let's see if we can get your screen shared. Okay. Um, let's see. Start screen sharing. Can everyone see my screen? It's it's working. It's working. It's working. Yep, ah. you're up. 
Well, okay, Gail, the floor is the floor is all yours. All right. Well, thank you, Cam, and thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. Um, my name is Gail, and of course, I'm the CEO of Traders Help Desk. And you can visit our site at www.tradershelpdesk.com. We also have a very informational blog, lots of free articles, lots of videos, um, and all you have to do is go over one, it tells you what it is, click on the topic, and every day for my members I do a daily market analysis of where I think the market may be going. And we also have support and resistance, which I trade a lot. I'm a contrarian trader. I love trading against the trend. Um, I don't know why. It's just my personality. They tend to move faster, which is probably why I like them. And um, I want to go and show you my charts. Now, I trade all of these Forex pairs, and you'll see that I'm using TradeStation. And um, I have everything set up in a radar screen. Any of these columns where you see price at a congestion dot or price at an ATR, this is like my two-hour binary trade window. And I go in a two-hour binary. I always go in out of the money, so I'm taking a lower risk trade, and I always put in a profit target. It either gets there or it doesn't. Typically, I'm only risking generally around 20 bucks to make 20 bucks. So um, I'm going to show you one that I'm in on the Dow right now. And you can see that we made a high here. And uh, this indicator here is the THD ADX. Well, anytime uh, you see these magenta histogram bars, I'm anticipating a magenta peak and that will look very similar to this magenta dot here. When that comes in, I'm expecting price to at least go back to this ATR. Now, that magenta dot was just plotted, but I know that if that low was taken out, which is right here, then I know that that magenta peak is going to come in. So I'm already in a two-hour binary based on that price formation, okay? And the entry price on that one was $80, $81. So basically risking $19 to make $19. And all I'm doing is anticipating that it will get back to this ATR. Why is the ATR so important? Because it's support and resistance. It acts just like support and resistance. So I know that once it comes back to here, it's going to test for support. If it finds support, then we could see some more upward movement. But my short-term bias would be to the downside, okay? Now, I do exactly the same thing on the Forex pairs, and I use a 3, a 12, and a 45. What I'm looking for in this column is anything that is above 50, above 70 is even better. So right now you see the British pound is at 75. Immediately I know to go and look at that because if this low is violated, then it would give me a magenta peak and that means I could trade it back to the ATR. Now the next question in that equation, if you're going to be trading contra trend trades is how much will it move? How much can the British pound move in a two-hour period? Well, I've done a market report that tells me exactly how much anything would move. And let me find it because I seem to have lost it. Give me just a moment so I can open it up for you. This market volatility report, we can go down and look at the British pound. And from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock, we can expect about an 80 pip move. Okay? So if I was going out of the money on the British pound, could I get 
you know, an 80 pip move. Yeah, I could in the next two hours from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now, the one thing that I wait on is for signs that this will take out the low. Notice how this price bar is still moving up. You're still moving up on the three minute. That tells me right now is not the time to take this trade. Does everybody understand that? Just type in a yes if you understand. I realize sometimes I go a little bit fast. <laughs> okay. So in this case, this is one I would be watching. Is it ready yet? No, it's not ready yet. But this may come in later this morning. Okay. So I'll scan again. Is there anything that's even remotely close? No, there's not. Okay, what about is anything at one of my congestion dots now? Let me show you what a congestion dot looks like. You see these little white dots? That's a congestion dot. They act as support and resistance as well. Typically, when they pull back to these congestion dots, that tells me it's going to come back and it's going to try to test this ATR. If you look up here, you also see that we have an ATR at 7069. So I know that this is potentially going to offer resistance and price will move down from that. Again, this would be a two hour binary. Is it ready yet? No, one that I would be watching, okay? What about if we have something at an ATR? That's the next column. You can see this one prices at an ATR but you're going against this 45 minute chart, okay? Not a good trade setup. It would be better if it was at this congestion dot at this ATR going in the opposite direction. Uh, British pound yen, one of my favorite pairs to trade, it moves over 300 pips in a day. You can see that we are at an ATR here. We have no potential for a magenta peak here. We may be retracing to this ATR here, okay, because we've had a magenta peak. Now, if I was to go long right now, this 12 minute would stop me out. Not a trade I'm interested in. Go down to the British pound uh, 45 minute chart. You can see that you're at the ATR. You're overbought over on the 12 minute chart. Does this look like it's going to go down yet? No. Once it starts down and I can verify, yes, indeed, we're going to go down, that would be one I would take on a two-hour binary to the downside. The USD Swiss franc, right at a congestion dot here, we're right at an ATR over here. This is where I would pull in a two-hour binary and say, okay, what, what prices do we have available? and how cheap are they? So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to the Forex binaries, pull up the USD Swiss franc. Okay, where is price at? It's at 0, 0, 0.058, okay? 0, 0, 0.058, that's here. I'm looking for uh, this one, it's 74. That's gonna be a 20 pip move. Could it do that at the opening? Yes, it could. So I'm going to enter that one and I'm going to put in a profit target of 40. Now these are not trades that I micromanage. It's either I'm going to make that profit target or I'm not. Everybody still with me so far? Okay, so um, over on the NASDAQ, um, I do think this is going to go down. You see that you're at a congestion dot here. I'm already short on the Dow. Uh, you could go short over here on the uh, DAX as well. Again, this would just be a two-hour binary on both of these. Um, now, one of the most important questions is can you make money if you're just using a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio? How many of you think you can? Just type in a yes or a no. 
They've done a lot of statistics on this. And you would be absolutely correct. What per when in percentage do you need to make profits if you're one to one? Do you need 50% winners? Do you need 60%, 70%, 80%? Type in your percentages. All right, well, let's see if we're correct, okay? Um, this spreadsheet just gives us the profit or loss based on percentages, okay? We're risking a one-to-one. -one. We're making one-to-one. -one. But 5% of our trades, we actually, it pops in our direction and we get double our risk, okay? And, and sometimes that happens quite frequently, okay? So we're doing 50% at one-to-one. -one. We're going to do 5% at one-to-two because we get those nice little pops. Now, what does that mean? This means this is what your equity graph can look like, okay? How many trades? 681 achieve a one-to-one. -one. 65 trades double your risk. 554 are losing trades, okay? And I can regenerate this, and you'll get a different uh, equity graph each and every time, okay? It's based on 1,300 trades, but you can see even with a 50% at one-to-one, -one. if you can just take 5% of your trades and get one to two, then you actually can make money. But what if we don't, okay? If somebody said 51, okay, let's type in 51, and you can see at 51, you potentially will go underwater. And it's consistently at 51, you're underwater if you're doing one-to-one. -one. Now, this does have the exchange rates into it. What about if we increase that number to 56? Would we still be underwater? No. Just a 6% increase would actually have you above. Now, somebody else said 60. Let's regenerate it with 60. Okay, 60 gives you a really nice equity curve. Um, you don't have a lot of drawdown. You can see that. If I go over to the data, you can see that we're cause not consistently at 20. Sometimes we're at 18. Sometimes we're at 21. I mean, this is real life, and this is what actually happens when we trade. All right, Cam likes 70%. Let's do it at 70%. At 70%, you've got the best equity graph. And it is consistently where you have the best equity graph, okay? But if we did 60 and doubled our risk on just 5%, we would also get the same equity graph, okay? So we don't have to necessarily achieve 70 as long as 5% of our trades, we let them actually take double the risk, okay? Everybody understand that one? Now, some of my favorites to trade are the market reports. Crude oil inventories, absolutely one of my favorite. Non-farm employment, absolutely one of my favorites, okay? In this market volatility report, which is free, you just download it from my website, um, I actually go through and tell you per month how much each of these major markets move. And by major markets, I mean the Aussie dollar, the Euro dollar, the British pound dollar, USD, um, yen, uh, USD, Swiss franc, US Canadian, okay? And I do it by month, okay? Um, double reward. It's double risk, Dan. So if you're risking $20, your reward is 40 okay? So you can go in here. If you are new to a market, 
you could actually go in here and say, okay, how many pips does the Aussie dollar move between one and two o'clock, 13 ticks, okay? Um, and you can read it for every month. Now, how many of you think that October, November, December are the largest moving months? Anybody? Which quarter of the year do the markets move the most? First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Those are the choices. Uh, it depends. And I'll tell you why it depends. On the Forex pairs, it would be the first quarter. On the indices, it is the third quarter. So I generally will focus on the indices, the third quarter, and the Forex market on the first quarter. Okay. Now, um, on crude oil inventories, which markets move the most? Anybody know? Is it just crude? Is crude the only one that we need to trade? Actually, that would be incorrect because actually for crude oil inventory, you would trade the DAX and you would trade crude. The DAX actually moves almost double what crude does on that market report, okay? On the non-farm employment change, which market moves the most? Gold is followed by the DAX, followed by the U.S. Canadian, followed by the yen, followed by the Dow, okay? I never traded market reports until the binaries came out. And once the binaries came out, um, I will look weeks ahead to see what the market reports are because I trade every market report based on these numbers. Um, and I do give them for the individual um, currencies as well, like for the Aussie dollar. The ones you want to trade would be the employment change and unemployment rate. Um, the cash rate, you always want to trade that one because it's going to be a large mover. Um, a lot of people think the German zoo report moves the market a lot. Actually, it doesn't. Only moves the euro, US dollar, 20 pips. I know to be out on a two-hour binary for that one, whereas the press conference moves 80 pips. On the British pound, the one that moves the market the most, of course, is the bank rate. The second one is the CPI year over year. Um, on the U.S. CAD reports, unemployment, huge mover for the CAD. Trade balance, mm, it moves. Um, the rate statement, 80 pips. And, I mean, you can almost nail the 80 pips and you could go in both directions let's say you don't even have a bias to the long side or a bias to the short side it doesn't matter with the binaries you could take a $20 binary to the upside $20 binary to the downside you're out of the money on both and you just put your profit target in where you would take $40 profit um, USD yen policy statement only moves the yen 26 pips that tells me i want to be out on a two-hour binary not one that's for the entire week okay so there's a lot of information in this report again you can download it simply by going to the website i do have it broken down by quarters by hour by month and by report Okay, and I use this a lot when I'm trading binaries. Um, let's say you're new to Asia, okay? How much could it move during Asia? Well, right now, Asia opens at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So during Asia, the U.S. CAD's only moving uh, 13 ticks because this would be ending at 8 p.m. Uh, not one I would really want to go out on, but what about the USD JPY? Would I want to do that one? Okay, um, that one moves double what the US CAD moves. Okay, so this is the one I would be targeting the Euro yen, British pound yen, and the USD JPY. 
Now the other aspect of this is if you're going to be counter trend trading like I like to do, you want the ones that number one have movement, but also your strike prices. So I like the strike prices that are under $10. So that gives us the Aussie yen, gives us the Aussie dollar, uh, the Euro dollar, it gives us the USD Swiss franc and the USD JPY. What time can we start trading to our binaries? Well, on the Aussie yen, it's eight o'clock in the morning, whereas the Aussie dollar is six o'clock in the evening, the USD JPY, six o'clock in the evening, the Euro US dollar, six o'clock in the evening, the Euro yen, six o'clock in the evening. Now, on the two hour binaries for gold crude, uh, gold is one point, you have a strike price every one uh, dollar. On crude, it's every 20 cents. On the DAX, it's 20 points. Now, let me tell you something on the DAX. The DAX on average moves 300 points in a day. It's one of my favorite markets. The more volatile it is, the more I like it, okay? So the DAX is one I trade a lot. The Dow moves about 180 to 200 points a day on average, and your strike prices are 12 ticks. That's another one I like. Uh, the NASDAQ on average right now is averaging about 60 points a day and the strike prices are four points. I don't like the NASDAQ as much. I prefer the Dow and the DAX just because of the volatility. I also love uh, gold and crude. So these are ones that I really counter trend trade a lot. We did uh, a couple yesterday in the binary option room and this was uh, on the DAX and this was how simple this trade was. We knew that we were above 50. You see the magenta bars here, right? I noticed this bar was forming. So as this bar was forming, we see we have the magenta line there. That tells me, hey, the magenta peak is going to come back. It's going to go back to the ATR. We entered on this bar. This was our strike price here. It was 46.32. It was a 30. One dollar risk, and we made thirty-one dollars on that one. Uh, another one that we did yesterday was on the Euro US dollar, and again, this one was uh, pretty easy. We actually entered. I anticipated the magenta peak to come in here. Now, this is one that didn't go all the way back. Okay, but do you see how close we were to where we were anticipating the magenta peak? That's because we have strike prices every four pips. That's what makes the difference, okay? So in this one, we were risking $20, but we made $20. Even though the market didn't do what we wanted it to do, we still made money because we have those really tiny strike prices, okay? Every four ticks, huge difference, okay? And that's really what I look at is, okay, which ones have the best strike prices for the way the market's moving? Let's say for some reason the market's moving really slow. I really zero into the four strike width because I'm a counter trend trader. Whereas if we have a day that's really moving, then I'm going to focus on maybe the markets that have the most volatility that are moving the most. Um, let's see if there's anything else we can look at this morning. Okay, the British pound has made a magenta peak. I know that because it turned dark and it has magenta peak there, but you can see it's already down and has retraced to what within six ticks of the ATR, so this is not one I'm really interested in now. It may push it down just because it's at the ATR. What is the ATR? It is a level of support and resistance. If you notice over here on the Dow, on this uh, green line, this green line represents a higher level of support and resistance, okay? We also had volume divergence there. What is volume divergence? In volume divergence is really pretty simple. Uh, we can make it really complicated, but we don't have to. We can see that we're making higher highs in price. 
But if you look at the volume, do you see how the volume started decreasing? That's a good indication right here that this market is actually going to give us the magenta peak and will actually retrace back to this ATR. Did I lose everybody or are you still with me? If we look at the NASDAQ, uh, not much divergence there. I wouldn't want to take that one. On gold, there are, the buyers are actually coming in. And I know that because this hashtag is actually coming above zero. You see this number is a positive number. That tells me that buyers are actually stepping in and they're actually buying that. And this is one I would go and say, okay, is there anything on gold that I could trade? And on this one, I would want to try to get the 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And even before these, you know, actually open up, I'm already watching for them. And right now, price is at 87.4. So I'm calculating probably 89 or 90 is where I would be going in at. Everybody understand that? Now, you also see that I've got some weeklies um, on my demo. These expire in two days based on exactly the same concept. All right, if I bring over, let me change this over to gold and I'll show you. Okay, this is gold. Do you see how this magenta peak is starting to come in? And you see how this is just hesitating, not going anywhere. We're out at 1102.5, okay? It just has to do it by Friday. I'm not in a rush. Um, that trade actually have for gold, we were risking $30 looking to make uh, $30.25. We have about 11 minutes before that one opens. I guess we could go ahead and do the 8 a.m. to let, uh, 10 a.m. Okay, so the one thing I want to look at, we got 1090.4. That would put it right up here at the ATR. But I'm going to go ahead and take that one because I don't need it to get there. I just need it to move up. Does everybody understand that? Why do I not need it to get there? Because my profit target is at 36, okay? So it doesn't actually have to get all the way there. It just has to move in that direction. What do we have going in our favor? We have a market open in at 9.30 this morning. It's probably going to push gold up. Does everybody understand that? Because why else would they be buying the low on gold? If you buy, if if people are buying the low, it's in anticipation that the market's going to move upwards. Okay, that's the whole trade setup. Um, let's see. And this is the second time they've actually come in on gold and bought the low, but that's probably a conversation for another day. You can actually see it on the 12-minute uh, as well. This is something that we call a momentum shift. And what has happened is you're making new lows here, okay? And initially, from here to here, you see that they increased. Well, the most important thing about this pattern is this little hash mark right here. Do you see how it closed above zero? Now, the magenta bar tells me this made both a high and a low. And when I look up to price, you can see that they closed in the upper percentile. That is a shift between buyers and sellers. 
that tells me that the next bar should go higher than this bar, okay? And all it is is a shift between buyers and sellers that's confirmed on the price bar, okay? I have a free article on that one as well. And again, all you have to do is go to my website and you can get these free ebooks. Um, they're listed on the blog. And all you have to do is go to the blog and download your free copy. Now, this one is doing just what we anticipate, no problems there. And we might have a slow market opening because today's a holiday, it's Veterans Day. So, happy Veterans Day to anybody in the room that's a veteran. Any questions? Anybody? And basically all I'm doing is looking for, and this is about as simple as it gets, for a price to either come to the ATR or be at an ATR or a line of gray dots, okay, tells me either I'm going to go long or short. And typically, I'm going to do it on a two-hour binary because two-hour binaries hold my attention. And, and that's an important aspect of trading, <laughs> making sure it holds your attention. I love spreads. Um, we did a spread yesterday on the NASDAQ in my uh, trading room, and they're great. They're great on the British pound yen. The one aspect of spreads is you need market movement, okay? It, I trade binaries when, uh, number one, I'm going to get a magenta peak. That's my favorite way of trading because it's counter trend. But number two, sometimes you don't get a lot of movement, okay? So I could go in one or two strike prices out. That's eight ticks on the euro dollar, okay? On a spread, I need it to really move, okay? Market openings, great for spreads, okay? Uh, market reports, great for spreads. But it's when you know the market is going to move. I did one on the Dow on Monday, and I'll show you the setup. It was a very, very easy setup. And it's the same exact thing that we've been talking about all morning. Uh, you have to be at an ATR, okay? Here, you're at an ATR on the Dow Jones, okay? Now, you can see as it made this high, look at the volume divergence on this, guys. I mean, that was, even if you really didn't know what volume divergence is all about, okay, do you see how they decreased substantially there? So this is going one way, this is going another way. Hey, that's divergence, okay? It shouldn't do that. All right, I did a spread because I, I thought, okay, this is going to move from here to here, okay? This is the um, nine o'clock bar. I was actually in it on this bar because I believed it was going to go down. And I thought it would come all the way down to here. It did exactly what I thought it would do. I did a spread on it. I think the spread was maybe $30 of risk. Yeah, they evaporated. I mean, there was nothing, okay? I mean, absolutely nothing in there. And then you get the bar formation to confirm it. It's like, okay, this is great, and down it comes. That's a time where you want to use a spread because number one, this is 180 minutes. You've got a lot of time for this, okay? And I was out until 4.15 that afternoon. Now, I did take profits when it came to this area because just like, you know, it can resist, it could also support price because this is below. It's a line of congestion dots. Hey, uh, I had profits. I'm locking in profits. Um, I'm sorry, Abby, I missed your question earlier. You can do NinjaTrader or you can do TradeStation. 
the only reason that I do trade station on Forex Abbey um, is basically because of the radar screen. I need something that moves very quickly. Now for Ninja Trader 8, this is something phenomenal that we're doing for Ninja Trader 8. We're going to come out with a radar screen type instrument. So it's going to have all the different minutes in all of these columns in Ninja Trader 8. And it will have email alerts, it'll have audio alerts, um, it'll have all kinds of alerts in it. And we have a market analyzer now. Um, let me close this real quick and I'll show it to you. It's not where I want it to be yet, but I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. And I'm not going to put all of the instruments in it because if I did, I would probably lock up my computer. Um, let's see. Let's add the Dow. And let's add gold. And I'm going to pull this over in just a minute. And then I can come over here. And I have a market analyzer. And let's just do the three-minute ATR. So now you I can already see that the Dow is close to a congestion dot, and I'll pull that over so you can see it. So that's alerting me, hey, I need to go look at the Dow three minute because it's coming up to this congestion dot. Do you see that, Abby? And I can do this on a 12 minute, 45 minute. You know, I've got all kinds of market analyzers that I can do. Right now, we have to do each individual market analyzer on a time frame. That's what's going to change with Ninja Trader 8, Abby. We'll have all of our time frames, all of our instruments in one market analyzer. Yes, it will be Ninja Trader 8. We can't do it with the current version, but we're hoping to have it uh, probably January, February of next year. Now, for those that are in the room this morning, um, if you go to my website and you're interested in either one of my packages, I have two packages um, that, let me get back to it. If you go to trading products, I have a silver package and a diamond package. Both of those packages, you can get $500 off. Um, just by being in the presentation. The only thing you need to do is type in a discount coupon on checkout, and it is PUB for Trading PUB, all lowercase. And if you apply that on checkout, you get $500 off either one of those special packages. And both of those packages, the difference is the silver package actually comes with online videos. It comes with webinars that I do throughout the year you have access to, plus all of the indicators, and I have chart templates, market analyzer templates, everything to get you up and running. Um, the diamond package comes with a two-day seminar, which will be held in February, okay? So, um, and it comes with the online video collection to get you started. And I have great videos online for my members. Um, it gets you into all of the webinars that I do. And I do three webinars prior to the seminar to get you up and running. It comes with all the indicators and the two-day seminar in Greensboro. Any other questions this morning, guys? I would like to thank Kim for having me in the room. I really enjoyed it. I'm glad you all joined me this morning. Thank you, Abby. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. I hope I have a wonderful trading day. I don't have any right now that are scheduled, Abby. Um, 
I would suggest uh, signing up for my newsletter on my blog. And any time I have a webinar, I send out a notice. Okay? And that way you'll have advanced notice on it. Well, thank you, Abby. Well, I do about uh, I do a binary option room uh, about four hours, uh, at least three times a week. Sometimes uh, all five days of the week, where I teach people to trade binaries. Um, to do the two binaries, you do have to be in the room. I do send out uh, signals on Skype. Uh, but to do the two hours, you really have to be in the room because I can't type them as fast as they come in. So, any other questions? Oh, that's right, December 4th. <laughs> Thank you, Raleigh. <laughs> I forgot about that. We're training non-farm employment December 4th. And that is my favorite one, absolutely. I will schedule my entire month around non-farm employment. I'll tell you that right now. It's just my favorite to trade. That's like quick cash. All right. Well, I hope everybody has a wonderful trading day. And again, thank you for joining me this morning. Okay. Hey, guys. This is uh, Raleigh White here with the Trading Pub. I'd just like to take a quick moment to thank Gail for her time this morning and uh, for your efforts in putting together this presentation and to sharing it with all of us. Gail, I found the information that you presented absolutely fascinating and want to thank you for all the hard work that you've put into your report which breaks down, uh, I call it a massive cheat sheet, which breaks down some of the best times to trade the markets in particularly when you're looking for specific movement you know, and you've broken that down by month, by quarter, by time of day. That's just an amazing uh, document. And if I remember correctly, that's something that's uh, available on your website and it's downloadable uh, for those that visit. So thank you once again, Gail, for coming. And uh, I very much look forward to having you here um, with us on December 4th. And you can show how you trade, you know, the non-farm employment report. So once again, thank you for your time. Everyone have a fantastic day. And we'll see you here tomorrow.